you today. How's everybody doing? Yes. <laughs> We're so glad you chose to worship with us today. First Chronicles tells us, it says, <laughs> it says a verse. Hold up. What did I say this morning? His love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. <clears throat> wow. I need some coffee. Amen. Save me some coffee back there in the morning. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. Amen. How many believe that this morning? His love endures forever. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about that scripture this morning. I was thinking, you know, no matter where I'm at in life, no matter what I've been through, no matter what I'm going through, if I'm in the lowest of the valley or I'm in the highest of mountain, his love is still faithful. Amen. He's still there. It endures forever and ever and ever. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's lift our hands before the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence today. God, we do give thanks. We are a grateful people. And we say thank you, God, for your love that has been poured out among us. And we receive that love today. And God, we pray that as we worship today, that you would show up in a tangible way. And we love you and we thank you. And all God's people said, amen. Receive it today as we begin to worship. Come on, you can shout. Your love. 
fighting for us. God is on our side. He has overcome us. He has overcome. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. Jesus, you are here. You believe he's here this morning?
this morning. Receive your joy this morning. Receive your peace this morning. Receive your victory this morning. Come on. This morning come on hallelujah father we thank you for this morning and we thank you god that we can celebrate a good good father we can celebrate a god who's victorious and we stand united today father god in victory as one saying we have overcome the enemy we have overcome the enemy in jesus name he's under our feet He's under our feet. Sickness has to go. Sickness has to flee. Right now, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God is fighting for us. Pushing back the darkness. Lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us. Push it back the darkness. Light up Come on, child. That cannot be shaken. It's in the name of Jesus. Enemies defeated. And we will shout it out, shout it out. shake a hand, hug a neck, and then you may take your seat.
Welcome to LifeHouse. We strive to provide ministry and activities to develop strength of heart, strength of family, and strength of community. We're so glad you're here. Fireside Chat is a ministry for men that happens Monday, October 2nd at Logan's Roadhouse in Midland and Monday, October the 16th at Saltgrass Steakhouse in Odessa. As always, pastor buys the tea and appetizers and entrees are Dutch treat. The Women's Bible Study is Tuesday, October 10th at 7 p.m. at Jessica Stanford's house. No need to bring anything but your Bible. Propel Women begins the fall session momentum Saturday, October 7th at 3 p.m. at the Midland County Library Centennial Branch. Books are available at the Connection Center for $13 or order a digital download at propelwomen.org. Hey, Odessa friends, join us for the Odessa Family Fellowship Saturday, October 14th at 6 p.m. at Rosa's Cafe on 42nd Street across from Sam's Club. Bring the kiddos and let's build a stronger connection. Make plans now to be part of the Lifehouse Family Night at Fiddlesticks Farms, Saturday, October 28th from 5 to 8 p.m. Tickets go on sale October the 1st. Roast hot dogs and marshmallows and have tons of fun in the corn maze, cow train, hayride, and so much more. Join a life group. Life groups meet Wednesdays at 7 p.m. You can find hosts and locations on the website or app. Ministry is provided for infants through 12th grade and doors open at the main campus at 6.30 p.m. The best way to stay up to date on the happenings at LifeHouse is the LifeHouse app. You can listen to sermons, check the events calendar, and so much more. Be sure to allow notifications so you can receive the latest updates from LifeHouse. If you would like more information about any of our upcoming events, check the weekly bulletin, stop by the Connection Center, or visit us online at lifehousefellowship.net.
Very cool. Very cool. Praise the Lord. I'm telling you, we want to welcome all of our first-time guests today. If you are a first-time guest in our house, we want to welcome you. God bless you. God bless you. We just want to say thank you. Thank you for taking time and making it a priority to come to church today. How many know what, what Matthew, the, the book of Matthew chapter 6 says, seek first the kingdom. And when you seek first his kingdom, all these things shall be added unto you. And I just believe that the power of God is so far up to this point. I'm just like, my God, there's electric, there's a there's an electric feeling in this house, and and I I know the Holy Spirit is here, and, and so whatever you have need of, you just you just receive it today. God bless you, and we're so thankful that you're here. This is our family first service, so parents, you just chill out. If the kids are a little antsy, a little you know, a little movie, don't worry about it. Because it was in services just like this that my life was changed. It was in services just like this that I watched my, my grandma, my grandpa, my aunts and my uncles and my cousins, my nieces, my nephews. I, I, I got, well, not nieces and nephews, but my cousins at least. I got to see God transform their life as an, at an early age. And let me tell you, we as parents and we as adults... What we do matters. How we worship matters. Because there's a generation that's looking up to you saying, oh, that's how you worship God. Oh, that's how you give him glory. Oh, that's how you praise him. You praise him when you don't feel like it. You put the word in you when you don't need it, so the word will come out of you when you do need it. Amen. I could preach, but I'm not. Today I want to invite up EJ and Lane and Miss Ellie Jordan. Come on up. We are going to do a baby dedication. Hallelujah. Godparents, Morgan and Evie, it's amazing. I want to turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 6. How many of y'all brought your Bibles today? It's good for each and every one of us just to turn over there. Deuteronomy chapter 6. This is really a command to the parents. The, 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 the joy we get honor we get that the Lord would give us our babies our kids and as I'm, as I'm reading this I want you just to think about Miss Ellie in Deuteronomy chapter 6 I'm going to just read 4 through 9 it says hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one you shall love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words that I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligent, diligently to your children. And shall talk of them when you sit down in the house. That means the, the word is going on in the house, in the car. Family reunions, vacations, the words being talked about. When you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, the word is being talked about. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. This is your command. This is an ordinance of God. That you do this. Proverbs says, train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Honey Jane, will you come up here and help me with this microphone? All right, give me this one. I can't hear you today for one time. Isn't she a sweetie? 
She's one of ours. She's our family. Yeah. God, today, I'm just so thankful. I'm honored to be the man that dedicated this little one, Miss Ellie Jordan, to you. Father, today, I thank you. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, baby. I thank you, Father, that she will not know a day on the other side. But she'll always know what it means to live a life of peace and prosperity and joy and favor. And Father God, I thank you for your hand of protection upon her. Keep her in all of her ways. Lord, I pray Psalm 91. Father, I call her blessed to be a blessing. I thank you, Lord, for your heart, your heart for her. Lord, Jeremiah 33. Father God, you know the thoughts that you have for her. Thoughts of goodness and completion and wholeness. And you'll give her an expected end. All that she's ever hoped for and all that she'll ever dream of. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you minister her, even right now, that she's, she has dreams of angels and dreams of you, Jesus, and her future, in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for mom and dad. Pray for the anointing of God to come upon them, to parent. Jesus. Thank you for sunshine, Lord. And how you brought this family to us. Wow. Amazing story of your love. Amazing story of provision. Amazing story of protecting taking good care of this family. Lord, I call them blessed now, and I thank you, Lord, you give them the mind of Christ. The Lord that Miss Ellie in their hands is pointed in a good direction. They're like arrows. These babies are like arrows in our hands, and we, and we shoot them toward their destiny in Christ. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the anointing. I call them whole. I call them blessed. I call them safe in every area. We thank you, Lord, for Miss Ellie. We dedicate her to you today. And we all say. Praise the Lord. Let's give them a hand. Amen. A couple weeks ago, we had a, a partnership lunch. And today, we're going to be receiving new partners. So uh, if that's you, come on up. We, we've got a lot for me to name everybody. Come on. Just come on. Yes. Praise the Lord. Come on up. Praise God. Come on, we can do better than that. <laughs> wow. The Bible says every joint supplies. And we are so thankful that God brought you to us. It's almost like the missing piece of the puzzle that God says, oh yeah, Lifehouse, this is what you need. And he brings a family and it makes the picture even clearer. I want you to know that you're not up here by happenstance.
grew up here because there were families just like me and just like us that prayed you in this house. We know that today that God brought you to us. And we're so thankful because we know that the job that God has called us to do here in Midland, Texas and within this body of believers is going to take every one of us linking arms. Today we're so thankful. Psalms 92, 12. If you'll open that up for me, I just want to read it for you. Uh, I put her on the spot in Psalm 92. She's fumbling. She's got it. Boom. Way to go, girl. That was quick. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of our God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock. There is no unrighteousness in him. You know, when you're planted, you're going to grow to higher heights. You're going to expand borders. You're going to go further than you've ever gone before. This year, y'all have heard me talk about my Spanish palms, everyone in here. Back in 2008, I planted some Spanish palm trees. And they were kind of like the signification of a new day for us as a family. Well, this year, I went out to my Spanish palms, and my Lord, they died. All of them died. Just both of them. No, usually one dies, but both of them died. When I pulled them out of the planter box, those things, the roots had been so condensed down those roots were never allowed to go to fresh soil you're only good for a little bit of time planted in a planter box but you're good for a very long time if you're planted in good soil where your root system can go out from the planter box and today we're so thankful for each of you and we just believe that this is good soil to grow, for you to expand, for you to go to higher heights. And we're so thankful for each and every one of you. Father, right now, church, let's just stand if we can to our feet. Let's just bless them. Lord, today we just say thank you for David and Bonnie. We thank you for Lee. Lord, I thank you for Sean and Trina. Lord, I thank you, Father, for what you're doing, for what you're doing in our lives, Father God, for what you're doing, for what you're doing, oh God. I thank you, Father, for bringing each and every one to us, and I thank you, Father God, for your hand of protection upon us. Lord, as I've, as, I've, as I've prayed and as I've asked you for certain anointings and certain giftings, Lord, Lord, I'm honored that you would bring these families to us. Father, I bless you and I thank you today. I thank you today. I thank you today. As I was praying there, the Lord wanted me to say that your testimony, your testimony is going to go throughout the land. Your testimony is going to redeem man. I just see it. As you testify, as you open your mouth, as you declare his goodness, you watch. Jimmy, I'm telling you, you watch. Nancy, you watch. 
your family. There's such an anointing for you to declare what God is doing. I'm so thankful. You bless me. Lord, I thank you for Deshaun. Thank you, Lord, for bringing her to us. Woo! Great days ahead. Lord, I thank you for the anointing on Sean and Trina. Hallelujah, Father God. Continue the work of the league, Father. Thank you for bringing him to us all the way from New Mexico. Yeah. You had a plan, didn't you? <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for Miss Bonnie, Mr. Dale, and their family. Lord, I call them blessed today. all said, amen. Let's give them a round. You just stay seated for, or standing, I'm sorry, for just a moment going to take much time as we get ready to move back into worship. I was reading something and it said that seven out of ten people are living paycheck to paycheck. Seventy-eight percent of the United States is living paycheck to paycheck. The thing that concerns me the most of that is, you know, the first thing that gets chopped on a budget? Tithes and offering. Been there, done it. You get it check that's too small or don't get a check at all and then you're all of a sudden you're like well how am I going to pay these bills well you know what I cannot give this much to the church and I can pay this bill I'm secured at least God doesn't want you to live like that it's not his plan that you have to worry about money because the reality of it is it's his money anybody ever bought something too big for your britches see I'm from Oklahoma we have britches that means you bit off more than you could chew. I bought a car once. It was way out of my league. $800 car payment a month, and it just tanked my budget like that. And I thought to myself, you know, I have the kind of taste like I'm, I'm a Starbucks kind of guy on a McCafe budget. I like the nice stuff. You know, the old way of saying it is, I was trying to be politically correct. You know, you have a wine taste on a beer budget, but I don't drink, but. You know, I like the nicer things in life, but the reality of it is, what am I going to be doing with the faithfulness of God's money in my life? Because it's not mine. And debt, it says this in Proverbs 22, 7, it says, the rich ruler, excuse me, the rich rules over the poor, and the borrow is the slave to the lender. I don't want to be in slavery. I want to be free with God's money so that I can give it where I need to give it. So then when the, the Holy Spirit speaks to my heart, I can say, you know what? I'll give 500 to missions. I'll give $100 to the guy on the street. I'll go buy somebody a meal. But I can't do that if I'm living paycheck to paycheck and I'm struggling just to make ends meet. God wants us free. If we'll be faithful in the small things, he'll make us lord over much. Debt will make you a slave. And the first thing it'll do is it'll challenge your faith every time. Because then you won't have the faith to step up and say, God, I'm going to pay this. I know I need to pay my light bill. But I'm going to give my tithe because that's my obedience to the word. I'm going to do it in faith. I'm going to step out in faith. See, when you're in debt, it challenges your faith every time you give. But see, God's bigger. I mean, your job is not your resource. God is. Trust him. Help him to get you out of debt and believe in the faithfulness of God and watch him move in your finances. Amen? That's a good word. Amen. Will you, you're standing. I was going to have you stand again because you're typically sitting. But will you declare God's goodness with us this morning as we declare the words that are on the screen for our lives, our family? We're going to speak the good things of God in our lives. Declare it with us this morning. I declare that I have the abundant life of Jesus today. God is bringing me to the center of his perfect will for me and my family. Thank you, Father, for an open heaven over my life, 
for your supernatural favor, divine appointments, and holy connections. I call for abundance as I honor you, Lord, with my giving. My investments and bank accounts are filled with plenty. I am abundantly supplied by you. I declare that my seed sown into this ministry will cause many to come to the kingdom of God and that your covenant will be established here in the Permian Basin in Jesus' name. Can we rejoice with the Lord this morning? We thank you, God, for you are a good father. You know every need. You know our bad decisions when it comes to our finances. But Lord, if we'll just step out in faith, if we'll just step out in obedience, and we'll just do what you've asked us to do. You will come alongside us, not with just yourself, but everything that is at your hands, everything that you're in charge of, everything that you're in dominion of. The kingdom of God comes along and stands alongside us to walk it out with us, to overcome our mistakes, to overcome our fears, to overcome our lack of faith, to be able to trust in you for miracles and abundance and resources and blessings in our, in our families, in our lives lives in our bank accounts. We thank you, Lord, because you're faithful and you're good. And you're no respecter of persons. Lord, if we're just obedient, you're faithful. We give you thanks and glory. We ask that you bless this service and bless every individual that's in this house. In your name we pray. And everybody said, amen. I'm sure you may serve the people.
his portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes if grace is an ocean we're all seeking heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about
Father, we're forever yours. And we thank you for the love that you have poured out upon your people. And we're so thankful, God. Just tell the Lord how grateful you are right now, just in your own words. Just tell him thank you, God. Come on, church. Just say it out loud. Just say thank you, Lord. Let's begin to worship Him where you are this morning. Tell Him thank you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Praise you. Glory to you, Father. Lord, we magnify you in this house. What good is it if we leave this place and you weren't satisfied? I have to. No law could ever fuel the fire, but it's because of a relationship. Jesus. And Lord, I thank you right now that there are people that are in a dry place. I just sense in my heart there are people in a dry place. the natural rain, but Lord, furthermore, we're asking for the spiritual rain. Spiritual rain to come and saturate and soak any areas of dryness in our spirits and in our lives. Lord, I thank you for your presence. I thank 
you for your presence is fullness of joy. There's hope for the hopeless. There's, there's answers to people who have questions. You restore those, Lord, that have been borrowed a touch from you. Lord, we thank you. Turn around and greet your neighbor this morning. You can be seated. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I want you in the key seat. Hallelujah. You turn those up. Let's give our children ushers a hand around here. Amen. You know, it's important. It's important they see what's going on in the house. We're called around here to raise generations, train up generations. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. How many of y'all been blessed? How many of you just blessed? Man, over the last couple of weeks, last week, Miss Deborah George, she come and knocked one out of the park. My goodness gracious. Mr. Willie, it's so good to have you again this morning. Let's give Mr. Willie a big round of applause. Praise the Lord. Come on, church. We can do better than that. He's family. There will be more. I promise you there will be more. Mm. The anointing is strong in this house. How many of y'all got your handouts this morning? Galatians 5.14 says, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. We're in a series called Neighbors. Not necessarily talking about the one next door, but per se, but I'm talking about the people we do life with. 
on our jobs, at the grocery store, getting gas. Next door neighbors can be this, yes. But I'm talking about people on the, on the, on the edges of life that we run across from time to time, but the Lord is calling us to go do something a little different. Maybe he is to extend a hand of grace and mercy, extend a hand of blessing. You know, God still fills up gas tanks. God still fills up grocery bags. And God still extends arms and gives hugs and shakes hands. And, and how does he do that? Through the body of Christ. And you and I, we have been given a charge from the gospel the good news, and that is to go into all the world to preach the good news, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And two weeks ago, I, 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 I ministered, well, actually three weeks ago, because we had the men's trip, and then we had Miss Deborah George. I feel like I haven't been up here in a while. I, I was kind of up here, I was like, oh, I've kind of forgot what it's like to be pastor around here. Just kidding. I love what I do. And I, and I come to this point where we talked about the Good Samaritan. And we talked about how Jesus was talking to the lawyer. And the lawyer was like, well, who's my neighbor? Trying to catch Jesus in a trick question, right? And, and Jesus begins to t tell a parable. And in this parable, he talks about a priest and he talks about a Levite. The priest, someone who, someone who helps in the ministry of a God. And the Levite who prepares the articles of worship inside the house of God. And God says, these two went on the other side of the, of the Jew that just got beat up on the side of the road. Because they had no time for it. And then Jesus says, and then there was a Samaritan. And if you know anything about the Jews and the Samaritans of this day, they did not like one another. It was a prejudice. There was, you, you, we think racism is going on. There was racism going on in that day as well. Because the Jews did not like the Samaritans, and the Samaritans did not like the Jews. But Jesus says, the good Samaritan got off of his camel, put him on the camel, took him to an inn, and took good care of him. And Jesus began to, to define what it means to love God your neighbor outside of skin color outside of belief systems Jesus is saying to each and every one of us look beyond and love anyways today if I have a title of my message it's, it's love without exception. Love without exception. Y'all heard me tell the story about Muhammad from Pakistan. I went into H-E-B one day and my screen was cracked on my iPhone and he's sitting in that. How many of y'all have ever seen that little telephone place as you walk into H-E-B? He's right there. Muhammad from Pakistan moved to Midland eight years ago. Moving back to New York where his family is because 
He has no friends in Midland. And I thought to myself, wow, Muhammad, if I would have got to you sooner, we would have been buds. I believe the Lord is trying to get us as a church and as a body to open our eyes. Don't be so tunnel vision about my four and no more. We have a job to do. And God is going to win a people to him, but he's going to use you to do it. And many times our, our, our distractions and our uh, stuff goes away when we get busy about serving others. You know, I want to be honest with you. I don't like getting up early and getting on the bus. But I tell you what, Mr. Willie makes it all worth the while. You mean pastor is running the bus ministry? Right now I am. Why? Because we believe in people. It gets me out of my my stinking thinking. It gets me out of my four walls. It gets me thinking more than about myself. It gets me thinking about others. And God is wanting you to do the same very thing. See, we understand the backstory. Now what Jesus was saying, now this is your neighbor. This is your neighbor. And love them like you love yourself. Isn't that amazing? How Jesus' words are so simple but profound. And the simplicity of the gospel where it just says, love your neighbor. Love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And the last part of that parable Jesus begins to describe the, the Samaritan and, and the characteristics of the Samaritan. He said the Samaritan showed mercy upon the Jew. And this is what mercy means in the Greek. It's elios. And, and it means compassion. It means extreme kindness. It means, oh, he pitied him. How many, when's the last time we pitied someone? And really stepped out of our, ourselves to take care of someone else. As a church today, I believe the message is strong and I believe the message is clear. It's not about you. It's about others. Number one in your handout today. Love is the framework for transformational change. As a nation, we are going through woo, turmoil, aren't we? Kneel not to kneel. Stand in the Pledge of Allegiance. Protest not to protest. Oh my goodness. It's a, it's a can of worms. This is what I'll say. When I love my neighbor, I'll choose them before I choose my, my feelings. I'll prefer someone else before I prefer myself. Amen. Amen. God has given in each and every one of you the capacity to love people. God has placed his, his DNA on the inside of each and every one of you to, to, have, this, to have this capacity 
and empowered each and every one of us to love the unlovable. To love our neighbor. And many would say, well, I don't know about that, Pastor Jeremy. There's just a certain, there's just a certain kind of person that I'm called to love. They got to look this way. They can't smell that way. Right? We've all been there. God is using us to reach the least of these. I'm getting ready to show you a video. And in this video, I want to talk to you about the man at the very end. His testimony is amazing. Because uh, this gentleman is a pastor. He He graduated seminary school. And, 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 and his, his testimony is phenomenal. And he wrote a book called Messy Grace. This young man was raised in a home where his parents were professors at a college. They get divorced and his dad becomes homosexual. And his mom becomes lesbian. And he's raised in a lesbian home. And now he's a pastor. And it wasn't until three years ago that this man, as he was preaching, watched the back door swing open and his mom and dad come into the church house and give their hearts to Jesus. And after, after they did that, they're all home, and he was like, I didn't expect y'all to come today. And what, what, what was it for you, mom and dad? What was it for you to give your heart to Christ? He says, they responded, and he said they responded this as easy as they could say it. The people in the church loved us. I've been guilty. I stand before you as a guilty man. I've put prejudices and and, and put people in corners and places where I just don't want to touch that. I don't want, I don't know how to respond to that. How do I love with Christ's love? How do I truly just give my heart like Christ would give his? I want to show you this video, and it's the guy at the very end, and uh, then I'll come back and I'll give you point number two, play.
exception clause. Who is it in your life? Who is it on your job? That the Holy Spirit's been just speaking to you. It's been just tugging on your heartstrings. But you're like, I don't know about that. When you accepted Jesus in your life, you gave up your right to be judgmental. You know, it's easy to love the lovable. It's easy to love those that kind of look like us. It's easy to love those that have the same similarities as us. We have the same passions and the, the same drive. But Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, and he's, when he was talking in the Beatitudes, it rains upon the just and the unjust. He says, what will you do to those that mock you, make fun of you? What will you do about those people that revile you and persecute you? Jesus says, say, I'll go an extra mile with you. Jesus says, give them your coat. Jesus says, they hit you on this cheek, turn it off on the other one. Is so against who we are. Because many of us, we would fight back. We would let them have it. It's easy to love the lovable. Can you love the ones that persecute? Point number two. People need equals, not heroes. People need equals, not heroes. Martin Luther King, he said, this is amazing. I ran across this. This quote, and Martin Luther King Jr. said, We must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. He also went on to say, Each and every one of us know that there is some good in the worst of us, and there's some bad in the best of us. When you and I discover this, we are less likely to judge our neighbors. When we are showing the love of Christ to our neighbors, we are doing for them exactly what we needed at one point in our lives. Today I want to ask a question. How many of you got saved because someone ministered to you the gospel? And the good news of Jesus. Would you raise your hand? Someone just said, do you know Jesus as your Lord? So keep your hand up. About 50% in here. You put them down. Thank God for that person who shared Jesus with you. Now, most of us in here I realize we, we live in the Bible Belt. And many of us were raised in church. We had a drug problem. We were drugged to church on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And maybe had Thursday and Friday off, but then we was drugged back to church. Now, how many of y'all, that was you? That was me. Uh, pretty much every one of us. <laughs> Thank God for the gospel, the good news that was shared to us. And that same spirit, you know, I'm reminded of, 
you know, at the time we were coming from Lubbock, Texas, and in this red suburban of ours, and man, we was just we was just having a time with the Lord as a family. And, and Savannah, my, our middle child, she's at Rama Bible Training Center right now in her second year, and 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 our she goes, I don't. I, I asked the question. I said, all, all of my kids are safe, correct? And they all said, yes, Dad from the back and I said now how many of y'all back there are filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and, and Winston goes I've been speaking in tongues since I was three Alex goes I'm filled with the spirit dad and then Savannah Jane popped up she goes I don't know the Holy Spirit I remember this And we had an encounter with God on 349 in between La Mesa and Midland, Texas. And the Holy Spirit filled that suburban and Savannah Jane received the infilling of the Holy Spirit that night in the suburban. I'll never forget it. And just, and I was just reminded of that how easy that was and how God just showed up when we just invited him in our car. And if he could show up in a car, don't you think Jesus can show up at a job? Don't you think Jesus can show up at a gas station or the grocery store, even in your home and on your block? Don't you think Jesus can show up when you show up? I think don't, uh, today, don't, do, do not discount the anointing of God upon your life. Do not discount who God has created you to be. We're, people are not looking for heroes. They just want somebody to walk arm in arm with them. They just want faith-filled people, just like you and I, to help them through the junk they're going through. We've all gone through junk. None of us are exempt from junk. <laughs> but thank God for the fire that burns away the junk. <laughs> Hallelujah. We can help people. Because none of you are perfect. None of us. There's only one perfect. And that's Jesus. People are not looking for heroes. They're looking for equals. Some of us need to get down off of our high, our high horse. Some of us need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Say, I once was there in life. Let me walk with you. Let me help you. You know, the enemy has done a good job to kind of put people in a place of complacency. Well, I've, I'm no longer there. I, I, I've now got my needs met. My kids are grown up. And now I'm in this place. I've got all, everything I need. And so I think in life people stop. That's not what God wants us to do. Never do you see the word retire in the Bible. Never do you see the word stop in the Bible. Maybe sometimes when, you know, you're going against the will of God. But you always see finish strong. You always see in the scripture where God is calling his people to finish the race that he has set before them. Church, you and I have to come up. You know, there was a man by the name of Jonah. Give me five minutes. I'm going to wrap this up. We're going to take communion. There was a man by the name of Jonah. You read Jonah. He's, he's running from God. Because he does not want to go minister in Nineveh. And so he gets, he buys the ticket gets on the boat 
And the guys on the boat are like, my goodness, we didn't know there was a storm coming. And they're in the boat, and the storm arises. And Jonah comes up out of the bow of the boat, and he says, if you'll throw me over, the storm will stop. And so they throw Jonah over. And God has an Uber waiting for him. And picks him up and drops him off on the shoreline of Nineveh. I mean, Jonah shows up, you know, he's like, okay, God, I'll do it. He delivers this message to the king. And I really think in Jonah's heart, he's like, man, I hope he rejects what I'm about to say so I can just put it to God. But what happens? The king declares a fast of mourning, of repentance. And the whole city of Nineveh, the whole, the whole area, about 200,000 people, they put on sackcloth and ashes and they begin to fast before God. And Jonah gets upset. Read it. He gets mad because they say, okay, we're going to repent. And Jonah's mad. I don't know if we'll ever understand why Jonah got mad. Because the story ends. And when we get to heaven, I'm going to ask old Jonah, what was the deal, dude? Why did you stay mad? Because 200,000 people approximately turn their hearts back to God. I wonder if he had forgot about the goodness of God. Your third point today is God is good and life is good. God showed Jonah so much mercy. And I think Jonah forgot on his travels that it wasn't about him. It was about the message that he was supposed to deliver. You see, when you understand that you're an equal and not a hero, (laughs) you could deliver the message and go back to what God has called you. Today, every one of you, I know, we could testify till midnight tonight about how God has been so good to us. Hasn't he been good? Hasn't he been good? I can't help but kind of get weepy and teary-eyed because every time I think about the goodness of God, I was lost was headed to a sinner's hell, but now I'm going to a saint's heaven. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life, but not only am I going to be there, but my wife's going to be there. Not only my wife's going to be there, but I believe all three of my children are going to be there. And not only are my three children going to be there, I believe my grandson's going to be there. Woo! And my brother, he's going to be there. And I think every one of you are going to be there. Man, God is good! Why? That's something in, on the inside of you that should shake you to your core. Don't get burned down with this life. Don't get burned down with these things because God just wants you to know that he's good to you. And you have something to be thankful for. God is so good. You know, I'm going to finish with these last verses of Scripture because it's, it has, it's so right on. Luke 12, 32, it says, Do not be afraid, anxious little flock, for it's your Father's good pleasure to give to you the kingdom. Psalms 107, 1 Amplified says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his compassion and loving kindness endure 
forever. And I finish it with this scripture. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. It says, let your light show sight before men in such a way that they may see your good works, your good deeds and your moral excellence. And they would recognize and honor and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Amen. Is it God good? Let's all stand. Now, parents, we're getting ready to take communion here in just a second. We do this as a family because it's sweet. It's a, it's a moment where we get to examine ourselves. The Bible says examine. Make some changes. Repent. It means stop what you're doing and Go another direction. He says, if you eat my body, you're eating everlasting life. If you drink my blood, you proclaim the Lord's oh, goodness. You know, church, what we do matters. How we do it. And the people we do it with matter. Your challenge this week is to let your light shine. Don't be dogged down by the, the ways of life. You're of a different spirit. You're of a different heart. We're not of those of the world. We have a hope. Lord, today as we take communion, we recognize you, Jesus, as the one who died upon the cross, shed your precious blood for each and every one of us. And today, Lord, we do this as a remembrance of you of your death, your burial, and resurrection. So today we eat and we drink in celebration of our, of our heavenly hope. We do this today and we take communion as a, as a remembrance, as a reminder to us that it's not about us, it's about you. We love you and we thank you. And we do this in Usher should come to the front. Now, we're going to do the side wings first. The sides. And, and the ushers will, will help you. And then we'll do the middle section last. You'll come and you'll grab your bread and you'll dip it and take it. We're doing something a little bit different today. That's why I'm giving you some instructions. But we'll do it as a family, okay? All right. Go ahead. Standing here in your presence, in a grace so relentless, I am one. Your presence.
When I'm lost, you pursue me Like my head to see your glory, Lord of all So beautiful Here in you I find your shelter Captivated by the splendor of your face My secret place I'm wide awake Drawing closer by grace And all my heart is yours All fear move I breathe you in I lean into your
It's a holy moment, isn't it? When you receive the body and the blood of Christ. Lord, I just pray blessings over everyone within the sound of my